I'm not in any way a singer. In fact, I'm not even allowed to do karaoke anymore. <laughs> Last time I did karaoke, I nearly started a world war. I murdered Franz Ferdinand. <laughs> 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 that is a joke with military history. I'm basically about a band who haven't had a hit for 25 years. But yeah, so, as Taylor said, um, it's a show about two tone about the ska music scene that exploded in Coventry. And um, I'm actually going to be doing it in Coventry next year. Living the dream. <laughs> and whenever I say that, people come back with this same old cliche as somebody sending you there. Which I find a bit annoying, partly because it's a bit of a cliche. And partly because it kind of implies that Coventry is a place that you send people to as a punishment. Yes. Used to be Australia, now it's the Midlands. <laughs> oh, Which completely, has anybody been to Coventry? Yeah. yeah. It's a fabulous city. You've got your Herbert Art Gallery. You've got a lovely um, designer village called the, the Fargo Village. Which, amongst other things, has got a Sergeant Bilco Museum. Yeah. If you know, you know. And they've got, um, the centrepiece of the whole city is a cathedral that was bombed by the Luftwaffe in the Second World War. And they never rebuilt it. And the reason they never rebuilt it, they thought it should stand as a testimony to the futility of war. Good luck with that one, but brilliant that they're actually doing it. But more than anything, uh, there's a place in Coventry called the Two-Tone Village. Yeah. And it's a kind of combination of a museum, uh, a restaurant, a cafe, there's a, a, mu um, a, a shop and all that type of thing. And that's where I'm going to be doing my show next year in April, in the actual home of Two-Tone. It's called the Two-Tone Village, so you can imagine how pleased I am. So it's a piece of work tonight called I Was Born Under a Thundering Scar. And it's all about ska music. If you're a big fan of the two-tone movement, uh, hopefully you'll find a few things. If you've never heard of two-tone, and you've never heard of the specials, and you've never heard of ska, please allow me to enlighten you this evening. So it's a show that's called I Was Born Under a Thundering Ska. Hello, I'm Tony, and I'm going to enjoy myself first. <laughs> please send me to Coventry, the city where I want to be, in the sky blue zone, in the black and white. Take me down to two-tone town tonight. From Orange Street to the ghost town, with a reggae beat and a touch of Motown, from the nightclub to Mr George's bar, because I was born under a thundering scar. Yes, I was born under a thundering scar. I'm not going to pretend to be a, an expert or an evangelist on scar music. There's people who've written magazine articles, there's people who've written PhD theses, there's people who've written whole books about it. I've written a 15-line poem, <laughs> and it's called Scar, A Quick History. Down in Jamaica, music makers, reggae calypso, rocksteady and mento, the offbeat rhythm, the walking bass line, cool sound system, radio playtime. Scat, scat, scat was a scratching guitar sound. The great Prince Buster donning the scar crown. Chet Johnson's greeting was a loud scavoovy with an R&B swing so cool, so groovy. Domino Jordan, the guitar chop, so much more than a new kind of pop. Upstroke skank, four triplet bars, because I was born under a thundering scar. Yes, I was born under a thundering scar. Cecil Buster Bente Campbell better known as Prince Buster, was born in Kingston, Jamaica on the 28th of May 1938 and became the forerunner of the Jamaican ska movement. David Hounsell Dammers, better known as Jerry Dammers, coincidentally was born in Uti in India, also in May, but on the 22nd. Not that much of a coincidence. When Wikipedia is your co-author, you can't always rely on it. But Jamaica was the home of Bob Marley, Jimmy Cliff, Harry Belafonte, India, the home of Ravi Shankar, that woman out of Brimful of Asher, and Cliff Richard. Not quite the same. But the reason he was in India is because Jerry Dammer's dad was a reverend, and he used to kind of go around the world sort of uh, preaching religion and so on. And Jerry Dammer's, because of that, ended up singing in the church choir. He also took piano lessons, but he very quickly got bored of that regime and he ran away at the age of 15, and actually lived on an island owned by John Lennon in a commune called the Diggers. And any big fans of John Lennon tonight? Oh, yeah. Lennon fans, yeah. You've all flown from Liverpool Airport, yeah? yeah. I love the fact that John Lennon uh, gives his name to Liverpool Airport and uh, I don't know if anybody's been there but there's a great big yellow submarine in the concourse. <laughs> Just as you walk in, it says, uh, from, a line from his most famous song, Imagine, it says, above us only sky, just before you go and get on your plane. A couple of years ago, when Liverpool Football Club was second from the bottom of the Premier League, <laughs> oh my God, how things have changed. Somebody, presumably a witty Evertonian with a marker pen to put, and below us only West Ham United. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, I think it's wonderful when you get an airport named after you, but I think they missed a bit of a trick there, because they've got that line from Imagine, but they could have used other lines from that song around the airport. Imagine no possessions at the baggage retrieval. <laughs> when your luggage doesn't turn up. We hope one day they'll join us when they're sending back the illegal immigrants. <laughs> That's my velvet rock joke, it usually divides the room. <laughs> and then we've been to Belfast. 
Yeah. They're talking about airports named after legends. Uh, I grew up as a Manchester United fan, sorry about that. Oh. And then, um, of course, one of, the, one of the airports in Belfast is named after Joe's Best, which is absolutely brilliant. However, it does tend to suggest that the planes are going to turn up a couple of hours late, <laughs> looking slightly the worse for wear, which given that it's Air Lingus, that probably is the case. It's a good airport, George Best Airport, but people will keep on banging on about how it should have been a much better airport. <laughs> That's three jokes there about a man who kicks a football in 1977. <laughs> <laughs> It'll give you some idea about the kind of level of topicality to expect with me. But uh, Jay got bored of being on the commune, and he decided to change from a hippie to a skinhead when he came back from Coventry through the medium of a haircut. And then he went to Nottingham Art School and Lanchester Polytechnic, and it was there that he designed the iconic figure of Walt Javsko, which was apparently based on Peter Tosh from Bob Marley and the Whalers, and it became a really iconic image as part of the two-tone movement. So, at that point, uh, Jerry was in the, City, in the City Stone Soul Band in Coventry, and they were playing all cover versions of Tamla Motown songs, and he absolutely hated it. He was playing the piano. He started introducing new songs to the rest of the group, but nobody was interested. They just wanted to play Tamla Motown classics. So, yeah, not surprisingly, he got a bit fed up, and he started playing the piano with his elbows. <laughs> it was only a matter of time before they gave him the elbow. But then he heard Prince Buster's music, Prince Buster's ska music from Jamaica, and he had an epiphany. And because he was obsessed with Motown, and because he was obsessed with ska, he decided to set up his own independent record label, and that's where Two Tone comes into the, uh, comes into the scenario. So there's quite a few characters in this. I'm only going to do the first half tonight, by the way, which is all about the specials. There is a second part that I'll do in Coventry about the selector of madness and the beat and some of the others. So there's a lot of people involved in this. So I um, decided to write a few limericks, like Two Tone limericks, to kind of deal with some of the characters that are involved in this story. Limerick number one, Jay Dammers. A Coventry musician called Dammers. He set up a label like Tamler's. He was working alone when he founded Two Tone. I guess he was one of life's gamblers. <laughs> I am aware that Dammers, Tamblers and Gamblers is not a particularly brilliant rhyme. <laughs> Turned out the limericks were slightly more difficult than I first thought. But while he was back in, um, in, in the Midlands, he went to Lanchester Polytechnic and he met a bass player called Horace Panther who became the bass player that played, in mu played music with him. And they formed a band originally called the, the Automatics, with a guy called Neil Davis on guitar. And Neil Davis went on to found uh, The Selector many years later. There was a Barbadian drummer called Silverton Hutchison, and there was a lead singer called Tim Strickland. But then they brought in um, another Jamaican musician called Linville Golding to give it a kind of authentic reggae sound. And Linville Golding's parents came over on the HMS Windrush. We're all familiar with the Windrush mm. and what happened under the mercifully brief, brief premiership of Theresa May. First of all as Home Secretary and then briefly as Prime Minister. Theresa May, you told the immigrants to go away. But I am white and so you let me stay. Oh how I hate you, Theresa May. And Windrush was a massive scandal for people to, to be deported for something that they couldn't find, that they'd, uh, you know, tickets and so on that they'd had many, many years ago. So I wrote a poem, not about the Limbo's, uh, Limbo Golding's mother, but about another woman who was involved in the Windrush scandal. And this is a poem that tells the true story of Sarah O'Connor. And it's called Woman of the Windrush. You fled from rising poverty, embraced our great democracy, through five decades of dignity, woman of the Windrush. You faced the plunging temperatures, paid taxes, rates and rents to us, never begged one on earth set from us, woman of the Windrush. The common wealth for all to share, the racist slurs you had to bear, from stop and search to stop and stare, woman of the Windrush. Secure within your lovely skin, you knuckled down and fitted in. Gave birth to British citizens, woman of the Windrush. Until thick as shit administrators undermined your hard-earned status, labelled you and yours as traitors, woman of the Windrush. Your honest pleas just hit deaf ears, the crocodiles ignored your tears. You hid behind locked doors in fear, woman of the Windrush. Deprived of work and benefits by jobs with who don't give a shit, your life unravelled bit by bit, woman of the Windrush. These statistics are real people. Deliver them from racist evil. No single human is illegal. Woman of the Windrush. As Baelish wrapped on your front door, your nerves just snap down to the core. Your soul escaped this hostile shore. Woman of the Windrush. Woman of the Windrush. Cheers. Thank you.